Welcome to Mindscape, a series of conversations with men and women whose ideas, vision and philosophy define our contemporary world. My guest today is perhaps India's preeminent figurative artist, but he's a Renaissance man too in a typically traditional Indian sense. He's a graphic artist, a sculptor and a poet. He was the founder of the Delhi Poetry Society. But really to talk about his work as an artist of many parts, I'm delighted to welcome Jatin Das. Uh, Jatin, you've been um, so many th different things in your uh, creative hat, as it were. Um, you founded the Delhi Poetry Society and, and, and have, are an active poet, too. Um, what is sort of an, an, an overriding, driving passion for you, for your creativity? Is it to make sense of the universe? Is it to make sense of yourself? Uh, to sort of a uh, form of catharsis for, for, the, for the chaos and confusion that we frequently encounter. Why are you an artist? <laughs> you know, I don't know where I... I don't know where all this comes from. Um, you know, I, I don't analyze myself. I don't even analyze the process. Um, you know, it's very... Uh, let me tell you, uh, give you an instance. I was holding an exhibition of drawings once in Bombay and some viewers came and said, oh, you've given up painting, you're drawing now. Uh, you know, they, don't, they didn't realize that a painter paints and makes sculpture and drawings and graphics and takes photographs and writes poetry and he's also a human being and he cooks and eats and dances, or goes for a walk, you know what I mean? So there are a lot of cubicalized notions about people and their activity. Frankly, nobody knows an artist, what an artist is all about. Uh, people realize and comprehend and respect a bureaucrat, a doctor, engineer, uh, maybe a scientist, but an artist... <laughs> and yet, sort of, the, the artistic impulse mm. is, in a sense, almost primeval. Uh, you know, you, you, you have cave paintings sure. uh, when, when people were sort of not really literate in that, in a formal sense that we may understand this. Uh, so there is, there is a primeval impulse uh, operating there. Every human being is creative, you know, and everybody can draw. Everybody can draw. I mean, I remember as a student in Bombay, uh, I knew Dr. Bhava, the scientist, who used to paint every day, you know, every day. And uh, not, not pretending to be an artist, but he was an artist. And uh, other than being a famous scientist, now, that impulse, that creativity, that creative energy, you know, there's all these old sayings um, which are borrowed, like, I can't draw a straight line, you know, as if drawing a straight line is something extraordinary and creative, you know. But doesn't sort of the ability to draw a straight line mm. uh, represent a certain degree of control, of craftsmanship that is necessary to be a, a good painter? Yeah, you see, what is it that constitutes to become a good human being or a good dancer or a good painter? It's very difficult to analyze. The modern scientific logical analysis all the time saying that uh, these are the prerequisites. This is how you should be trained and then you become something. That's not true, really. But isn't it a, 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 a reflection of, your, of, of, of control in a sense? That, that, that you have an impulse, you have a sense, you have an idea, and, and can the hand execute that? Sure. Or is there an element of, of, of surrender, of controlled, decontrolled, as it were? Both. Where the medium takes it. over? Very right. Both. All of it. All artists all over the world, whoever I've met or about whom I've read, people of the earlier times, they always said, and I feel the same, that you learn the technique. You created, you establish a connection between your fingers and your eyes and your feeling, you know. But how it happens, you don't know yourself, number one. 
Number two, there's a certain amount of accidents, certain amount of wandering. You see, uh, when you start drawing or painting, you start like a child. Sometimes you have a blank canvas in front of you and you don't know what to do. And sometimes you start, sometimes you continue and then you stop again. You know, so there is no one method. Uh, there are many ways, you know, <laughs> that's one aspect. But 100% I agree and I'm very idealistic about it, that one must have a solid foundation of study. Uh, I'm sorry to say that a lot of young artists are not working enough. They're not enough riyas, you know. And hence the work looks weak and raw and unexperienced, unrealized. You, know? you traveled uh, from, from, from Orissa mm. uh, to sort of the big, well, I don't know if I should call it a big bad world of mm -hmm. Bombay, but let's say the big world of Bombay uh, when you were very young and the formal study and education. Bombay was great. And at a time when there was a great deal happening uh, mm. in Bombay, uh, sure. in, in, in the arts. That's right. So what was this sort of um, transition like for you? See, when I look back, it's been, what, 45 years that I've been away from Rissa. Orissa, uh, I come from a district, an old princely state called Mayurbhanj, bordering Orissa, Bengal and Bihar. So one had access to all these cultures and all the bordering states, mm -hmm. you know, always bordering areas mm -hmm. in life, in thoughts, in ideas, mm -hmm. all the bordering areas that you have an interaction between both. Mm -hmm. So I had access to tribal culture. Mm -hmm. I, I saw tribal music, I listened to tribal music and tribal craft classical art and uh, we used to have dance and music concerts in Mayurbhanj. It was a very enlightened little pr princely state. So one grew up with that kind of ambience and natural, meaning mountains and rivers and sea and all of it. So one was very lucky. I think those who grew up or grew up in, in a natural environment, they uh, inherit and retain different kind of natural strength. Then I'm traveling from the east coast, from a small town to the biggest city of the country, Bombay. Bombay has become Bollywood now, but in Bombay in those days, in the late 50s, when I went, I was very lucky. I had access to a lot of things. I was a founder member of Anandam Film Society. I knew the famous writers, poets, painters, who are today famous. Mm -hmm. And we were all grouping, and we were all beginning and starting, like Sukhdev and al Kazi and Ravi Shankar, and you know, and various other people. And uh, I remember uh, this Rajesh Khanna mm -hmm. used to come and act in plays mm -hmm. and share a cup of tea with me, you know. Mm -hmm. And he used to have Sally Ghosh at the mm -hmm. corner of uh, Warden Road. Anyway, but even people who worked in advertising agencies, they wrote poetry. They acted in plays. You know, they were doing, they were not advertising per se people, but they were advertising job was a retainership but they were interested in writing poetry, like T.C. Kathrak, uh, Alik Padamsi, and all these people. You know, sort of in, in, in many religious traditions, you have the concept, the notion, the, the significance of Sangha. Yes. So in this, in a sense, this was your Sangha. Fantastic. You know, it was a very homogeneous, you know, uh, say I would go to the art school as a student. In the evening, I'll go to a concert. I'll go and see a play, uh, you know, The Touch of Brightness that Pratap Sharma wrote, you know. And uh, this was 1964, 63, and various other things. Sukhdev, the filmmaker. So, what were know? these, you know, for you, the first uh, uh, stirrings, shall I say, uh, of, of, of creativity that sort of reassured you and, and those around you that, well, you know, there is a future here and, and, and not as an accountant, engineer, or something else? No, I, I always wanted to become, uh, be an artist, but my vision of wanting to be an artist is to paint which was in Orissa, in little town of Mayurbhanj. Mm -hmm. But when I went to Bombay, even there it was work-oriented. I did not distance myself to look at a career, or in terms of money, in terms of name. We didn't think of that term. Are you getting my point? One was all the time working. Mm -hmm. And even now, you know, when somebody says about your life, about your career, uh, your ambitions, I don't know. You see, because when you are continuously working, you don't distance yourself, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, I don't like the analyzing process. Mm -hmm. And yet, uh, over, a, over a period of time, yes. uh, your work uh, has developed an identity. Mm -hmm. uh, you can look at, uh, at, at, at figures you can, that, that, that you paint, 
and, and, and this is Jatin Das's work, even if it doesn't have your signature. Uh, there, is, there is a process of... But it's not intentional. I, I, don't, I don't create signature painting in the sense mm -hmm. I don't repeat myself. Mm -hmm. But being the same person, it's like if you were a vocalist, mm -hmm. your, your, your voice will have certain octave which is natural and inherent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So likewise, my painting would be recognized by somebody, mm -hmm. but I'm not concerned whether my painting is recognized by somebody as my work or not. Mm -hmm. My concern is my work and my experience in the work. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and yet, mm. uh, in that process, like uh, in cinema, uh, you know, you, we have the notion of the familiar image. Yeah. Uh, so even though it's not repetitive, yeah. there is a, a, a familiarity, a sure. familiar image that sort of unfolds. Indeed. And when you look at, at work over a period of time, you can see the evolution and the changes sure. uh, that, that you as, as, as the perceiver and the articulator uh, are, are going through. And, and what is it uh, that, 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 that the human form mm. uh, you know, so draws and attracts you in a sense? What does it embody? What does it represent? What, why does it hold out this, this, this possibility for you, in a sense, through the human form to reflect the universe? It's not just the human form. That's what yeah. makes a great artist. Uh, you see, quite often, there are some people who would say that you paint human figures. Don't you paint landscape or non-figurative? I do sometimes. But it is true that I am uh, uh, continuously occupied by human form. Human predicament is a basic concept. That's a large umbrella under which I work. But I don't, by, while I'm saying it, I'm not limiting myself that I won't do something else. A lot of people don't know that if I went out and I saw a bird or an animal, I also sketch and draw and leaves and plants and trees, etc., which are material in my studio, which hasn't seen the light of the day. So people also judge from what they see in a gallery, number one. But the other thing is, any form in lifetime is too short to do anything, frankly, one lifetime, you know. Uh, um, because if you take the form of human form and you go on peeling the onion, you know, it sort of unfolds itself into many possibilities. And one hasn't even done fraction of what is possible. You know, frankly, now I feel um, you know, I'm beginning to paint again. You know, as a student, I, I used to do 300 sketches a day as an exercise. Then my anatomy professor used to take me to the hospital, so I used to see the human dissection and draw the muscles. Mm -hmm. So these are all exercises, they're not work of art, you know. But uh, when you work, there is so much to be done. You and know. yet you are in your work sort of more, shall we say, sympathetic to the female form? Not necessarily. Female form, of course, there is Lalitya, there's grace, the feminine grace which artists all over the world, whether in sculpture or painting, have done it. Of course, I do more female form. And more sympathetically sometimes. Uh, I don't understand what you well, mean by sympathetically. Well, in the sense that uh, the, you know, the male form in your painting yeah. uh, isn't sort of always, shall we say, as alluring yeah. as, as the female form is. Yeah. Well, the female form itself, the Shakti, the, the Lalitya, the curvilinear okay. movement of a female body, okay. uh, from Michelangelo to Da Vinci to Konarik and Khajurao and Chola Bronze, everybody has worked on it. So because it has the beauty and the grace, number one. Not that the male form do not have a grace. Uh, it has a sensuality. Uh, it has a curvilinear body language. And, uh, but I have worked on, I did a series in the 70s called Man Woman Interaction. You know? Uh, I held an exhibition once uh, about 10 years ago uh, called um, Women of Clay, mm -hmm. you know? And, but that referred to Kalidas's concept mm -hmm. of the feminine grace, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in terms of uh, your, your, your accessing uh, your own creative impulses, uh, your own energies, your own intuitions, how does that work when you have to go and, 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 and you're commissioned to paint a mural in Parliament House? Ah. <laughs> what happens then? Uh, you see, this is sometimes... Uh, a good challenge with yourself. You know, you know uh, we all test ourselves, you know, sometimes on, on our own mm -hmm. to uh, challenge, mm -hmm. attack yourself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, uh, sometimes when I draw a figure, mm -hmm. I start from the toe. Mm -hmm. Another time from the hand mm -hmm. to the head. Mm -hmm. Usually somebody does a head and then continues. 
usual figurative artist. So these are, these are things that one does. Sometimes I do a commission of portrait. But suppose you commission me a, to do a portrait of you, I decide what size I'll do, what mm -hmm. color I'll do. I mean, that's my prerogative. I don't take a commission where the commissioner or the patron dictates. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is the first time I've got a commission of a mural mm -hmm. where I'm dictated mm -hmm. by the mm -hmm. Parliament Secretariat, although they invited me for the mural, that they wanted a, a mural which will depict the journey of India. So this is from Mohenjo-daro till Gandhi. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my friends tease me and say, Jatin, so there is no opportunity to, for you to do any nudes in your painting of this. <laughs> as a show. <laughs> uh -huh. But the sculptures are there. So this is a journey, a historian did research and I went through archives and you know, one, there are a lot of groundwork and homework has been done. So these are panels, this is about 80 feet, uh, you know, the mural, uh, 7 feet by 80 feet mural. But their own panels, canvas mounted on uh, board and I'm painting, it's been more than two years and they, they must be quite angry with me, <laughs> you know, they wanted me to finish early. But returning to commission with the subject. I did a large sculpture in Bhilai steel plant. Mm -hmm. But they told me, do what you like. Mm -hmm. I've done a mural in IAS Academy in Missouri. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so fortunately I was very lucky that whenever I've done a commission, mm -hmm. I've had total freedom. Mm -hmm. In the very fact, I have to do a narrative, mm -hmm. but without it being illustrative. Mm -hmm. It's not an illustration. And I'm not, uh, I'm not painting every so 5,000 years. Mm -hmm. I have taken the liberty mm -hmm. of deciding what to do mm -hmm. as a painting, as mm -hmm. a mural. You know, you've often said that uh, you make a living from your work as an artist, but uh, you don't just work to make money. Well, I say I live on the sale of my painting, but I don't paint for selling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then why do you paint? I don't know, because I like painting. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, today, a lot of people have formulated, structured their forte, you know? They know all about themselves. They're so confident. The society at large is telling everybody, you must be confident. You must present yourself smartly. But we're very fragile people. You know, I, uh, I don't know even now why I paint, because I like painting. I like the smell of the color, the central experience of application of color or a line. When you draw a line, it's like etching with blood, you know. But I, I have not... Uh, I like the act of painting and I like and I've been painting for some time and when I don't paint I feel restless mm -hmm. and when I paint even my tension releases mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also I have certain concepts that's why I'm painting. But I, I always feel what I'm saying no, that I'm not, I'm not prepared a uh, 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 thing that this is, these are the reasons why I paint. <laughs> but you know, uh, uh, ideally mm. all art is, is sort of very much uh, uh, an intimate personal process of, yes. of visualizing, of, of articulating, of 100%. communicating, of sharing. Mm. Uh, yet historically, mm. uh, art has also been political. Um, mm. It is circumscribed by political ideologies, by, uh, by state ideologies, by governments, by processes. Um, you have had some sort of encounters uh, with this uh, in the sense that uh, when you were deeply moved by the Orissa cyclone, and you sought to do something ab about this and sort of got caught in an ideological imbroglio in a sense. Um, how have you worked around this dilemma for an artist? Yeah, yeah before, because your, your question has three or four fold. Uh, you see, uh, political art or politicization of art or art created in a particular political milieu, like in Poland, in Russia, elsewhere, hmm? or certain things which are allowed or not allowed or in an Islamic country not doing figures, and so on. These are pressures of a society which creates uh, art, but quite often, uh, you know, uh, an individual pursuit of, of art in any discipline, whether it's poetry or painting, like during partition, during freedom movement, we had a different kind of thing. Uh, Tagore wanted that all paintings should be done in uh, watercolor and tempera because the Eastern thing and everybody tried to copy the miniatures and the Bengal school came into being. But art and artists do not believe in political or ideological and sociological boundaries. Number one. They don't or they should not? They don't and they shouldn't. Mm -hmm. 
But it is also true that in a cultural milieu in which you live, political, social situation, that also reflect and you are driven by that to do something. The taste, you see, like quite often people talk about Picasso's Gornica, for instance, in the Spanish Revolution. So, but, you know, uh, we haven't had other than other than uh, uh, the partition and the freedom movement and, you know, against the British, we haven't had that kind of political art as it's been in Eastern Europe and other communist countries. But, um, you know, uh, there's a very thin line between illustration and placard art and genuine work, uh, and of course, who is to judge. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, like, say, we have an organization called Sahmat of Artist Community. When we do an on-the-spot little drawing or little thing, it's a placard, it's a little drawing, it's not anything serious. I mean, the, uh, the concern is serious. But oil painting or a thing is not done on the street in half an hour. Yeah, you get your point. And quite often people mix up between the two. That is one. Now, returning back to... Well, let me just sort of pick up on this. You, you, you mentioned Samad. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, Samad is, is an organization that yeah. is committed to uh, pluralism. Shall we say yeah. uh, it comes up against political ideologies, party political ideologies that oppose, that resist yeah. right. the the worldview yeah. that Samat and the artists that associate with it embody. Yes. Uh, now, to what degree are you comfortable with being a party to one worldview okay. or the other? Yeah, 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 yeah. As an artist, yeah, you're very right. You see, when Sabdar Hashmi died, Al Qazi and Habib Tanvir and me and many other artist friends got together and we created this. But today it has a different colouring, I must say. Uh, originally it was, this was nothing against political parties or political ideology. This was a forum to ventilate artist opinion about issues, you know. But uh, unfortunately it is not so now as it started. I wouldn't like to analyze, uh, discuss this too much now. But I would like to now go back to your uh, initial question of Rasa. And I'm from Odessa. The cyclone took place. As you know, the famous writers, poets, painters went in the First and Second World War as a soldier. Okay. But this is not a, of course, creativity is uh, a, into every possible thing. But I'm working not as an artist, also as an artist. Yeah. But I'm not drawing and sketching and illustrating what is happening in the village. Because it's too close to me about human misery. So I'm working as an NGO, uh, reconstruction rehabilitation of a particular village. So I have high level of stress in the process of doing this. But that's been g gone on for 11 months, frankly. This is October, exactly a year ago this happened. But I have, like I've talked about uh, Sardar Hashmi when he died. Normally, I don't make factual paintings. Like there are artists who are capable and everything happens so they do something quickly. Uh, but I did a painting on Sabdar because my daughter worked uh, with him on street plays and I knew Sabdar very well, he was a lovely human being who wrote short stories and plays. So that particular event of somebody you knew a month ago and he's gone and he's killed, you know, this is one. Uh, while I'm saying it, I want to share this with you, that every creative person has thousands of ideas in his mind and dreams and uh, visions and concepts. If 0.01% is actualized, that's good enough, which we have to be thankful, you know. But a lot of things do not see the light of the day. Well, Jatin, thank you very much. We're delighted <laughs> that as much of your work has seen the light of day as we've been privileged to see. Thank you. <laughs>